Good morning. Could you please close the door? Okay, we have two more class to complete the course in this semester. And I'd like to continue the crystallographic theory to understand the Martin, uh, phenomenological theory of Martin City transformation. And the basic theory will be complete uh, in today. And next day, we will apply the theory in real uh, analysis of the crystallography of Martin site transformation. Today, I would like to talk about the similarity transformation and some issue which is really uh, related to the uh, Martin site transformation and how can we express the invariant plane strain and the property of the invariant line strain as a combination of two invariant plane strain. Here, ASA and BSB is the same <coughs> deformation matrix, but it is defined in different bases. So the deformation S, ASA, is the deformation matrix S defined based on the basis A, and the deformation BSB is the deformation matrix defined on the basis B. So the basic character is the same because they describe the same deformation. But they are defined in different bases. Actual form of their matrix will be different. <clears throat> so here, the vector U based on basis A will deform the vector V and the vector, the same vector u based on the basis B will deform to vector V on the basis B. Because vector u and vector V is the same vector, but defined in different bases. AU is defined based on A, and BU is defined on uh, basis B. So you can guess there is some relationship between this deformation matrix. If we know the coordinate transformation matrix, right? it is natural to think there is some relationship between these two deformation matrix. Actually, they, they are the same deformation, but defined in different bases. So it is natural to think their relationship is related with the coordinate transformation matrix. So here, the coordinate transformation matrix A, J, B, which convert the vector based on the basis B into the vector defined on the basis A, and we can write this coordinate transformation matrix A, J, B, and actually this coordination transformation matrix convert the vector U expressed on the basis B on vector, the same vector U expressed on the basis A. And the same way, we can convert the vector V expressed on basis B to the same vector V expressed, but expressed in different basis A. <coughs> so when you put these two relationships in this first formulation, here, put this one, this one, and this two, this one. Then we can obtain this relationship, because AB is AJB and B, and AU is AJBB. So it is straightforward. 
right? So when we take the inverse matrix of A, J, B, which is B, J, A, then we can obtain this relationship. The vector U expressed on the basis B is deformed to vector V on the same basis. So when we compare this one and this one, you can understand that between this to deformation vector, we can relate this to deformation vector with coordinate transformation matrix. Deformation matrix with two coordinate transformation matrix. This is called the similarity transformation. The purpose of similarity transformation is convert one deformation matrix based on expressed on certain basis into the matrix form expressed in other basis. So to do that, we have to know the tra coordinate transformation matrix and its inverse matrix. Okay. <coughs> so now let's close, let's go close to the property of Martin site. So as I told you, the shape deformation, the observed shape deformation of Martin site transformation is accompanied by invariant plane strain. And as I told you, there is three kind of invariant plane strain, simple dilatation and simple shear, and the combination of two deformation. So I want to describe that invariant plane strain in the matrix form. So what will be the most convenient way, most simple way to express this invariant plane strain? How we should take the basis to simply express the invariant strain? What is this, what should be our choice. <clears throat> the simplest way to express the invariant plane strain is take basis two axis on the invariant plane and one axis normal to that plane and one of two bases on invariant plane is parallel to the shear direction. When we take the bases like that, these three matrix express the deformation matrix of invariant plane strain, right? For example, when we take this one and the vector perpendicular to this screen is G2 and this is G3, then 1, 0, 0. We'll go to 1, 0, 0. 
right? And zero one zero four two zero one zero and zero zero one will depend do S one zero S zero one, right? <coughs> so by defining these three basic vector, we simply explain the deformation matrix. So from this one, you can easily get the deformation matrix of simple shear is given by this matrix, right? So that is most convenient way to express the deformation matrix. And uh, combined of these two simple dilatation and simple shear will be given by this form. And here, M is the vector express the displacement and D is a unit vector along that direction. And this vector can be decomposed into shear and dilatation term. <clears throat> the expression of the invariant plane strain based on the previous phase, G1, G2, G3, give us very simplified form of the deformation matrix. But in many cases, we want to know the deformation matrix based on crystallographic base, which means that the crystallographic base means that the base basis based on the unit cell. <coughs> So we have to convert this simplified form based on G basis into somewhat complicated form based on the crystallographic basis. So here our base G1, G, G1, G2, and G3, with this basis, the deformation of this invariant plane strain is given by this one. But when you take X1, X2, X3, which is the crystallographic base, the deformation matrix will have some different form. Now you can understand how we convert it. At first, we have to know the coordinate transformation matrix between Z basis and X basis, right? So if we know the coordinate transformation matrix from G to X and its inverse matrix, we can obtain the expression of invariant plane strain matrix based on the crystallographic base. So what will be the link between the G basis and the X basis? You know that when we describe the invariant plane strain in general form, the most important character of invariant strain is is the plane normal vector of invariant plane and this displacement vector, right? 
the magnitude of displacement and unit vector describing the direction of the displacement. When we know these two values, we can define the invariant plane strain, right? So these two characters the most two most important characters of the invariant strain. So here, the vector P and the vector D is two most important characters. So if the vector D and plane normal P is defined by these two relationship in the crystallographic phase. This is D1, D2, D3 is a component of vector D on crystallographic phase. And this vector P1, P2, P3 is component of a plane normal in the reciprocal lattice. Then this six number relate the deformation matrix between C basis and X basis. And with some very complicated manipulation, if the plane, uh, the direction, the vector, unit vector, describing the displacement is given by D1, D2, D3 in crystallographic basis, and the plane normal of the invariant plane is given by P1, P2, P3, then the deformation matrix of invariant plane strain defined in crystallographic basis is given by this one. And when we take the vector form, it can be written this very simplified form. Okay. Any question? I remember one of the problem in the problem set three is to write this form and to make the problem simple, I put additional condition. So I hope you try to that. <coughs> so the point is that we can express the deformation matrix of the invariant plane strain if the direction of the displacement and the plane, the index of the plane, invariant plane is given, then we can calculate the matrix form of deformation matrix based on the crystallographic phase. S and delta is contained in D because here, you know, the D is, D can be decomposed in shear term and dilatation term. And you can see the value M is related with S and delta, okay? To check whether the XPX is the 
expression of invariant plane strain, let's consider the deformation of arbitrary vector u with this deformation matrix. So at first here, the vector u <coughs> This is vector deformed by vector. And this vector will be the displacement, right? So So the displacement is given by This is the expression of xpx. So when we calculate this term first, this is x here and x here. So when you look at this term, this is inner product of P and U. So when U, vector U is on P, plane P, then this value becomes zero. So the displacement is x u minus x u, and displacement itself will be zero. So the vector u, if the vector u is on plane P, then the displacement is zero, which means that the plane P is invariant plane. So if the vector u is not on p, then this value have some scalar value. So this is tensor L, and the remaining is m and some scalar r, x, d. So the direction of the displacement is parallel to d. Right? So that is consistent with our thinking that the plane P is invariant plane and any displacement, the displacement of vector which is not on P should be parallel to the U, uh, the vector, uh, vector D. So far, we have thought about the change of the vector by invariant plane strain. 
Now how about the plain normal? How, how was the plain normal vector affected by invariant plane strain? According to the definition of homogeneous deformation, the relationship when the, the relationship of the plane normal vector and the vector on the plane should be the same after the deformation. So at first, let's consider two vectors of H is <coughs> plane normal vector and V is a vector on plane H. And after deformation, vector U is converted or vector V and plane normal H is converted to plane normal K. According to the definition of the homogeneous deformation, the relationship with these two vectors should be the same, the relationship between these two vectors. So the inner product of H and U should be the same and K and V. You already know that the vector V based on X base can be expressed by the vector U and the deformation matrix, right? So when you compare this term and this term, when you compare that term, H star should be the same K, X, P, X, right? And K star is inverse. So the plane normal is converted to plane normal vector by deformation x p x with this relationship. When the deformation matrix is x p x the vector, the vector is converted with this relationship. But the plane normal is converted with this relationship. And don't forget there is a inverse of the transformation deformation matrix. So when we obtain, when we would like to obtain how, when we would like to know how the plane normal vector is affected by invariant plane strain, we have to know the inverse of invariant plane strain. And when the plane strain is given by this form, its inverse is given by this form. And here Q is one over the determinant of the deformation matrix. When you compare this term and this term, you can understand the inverse of XPX, the deformation matrix P, is also invariant plane strain, right? So when we compare that, the difference is the coefficient, only the coefficient. So 
the inverse matrix of P also express the invariant plane strain. It is natural when you compare, when you think about the simple shear. When you think about simple shear, there is no volume change during the deformation, right? So the determinant should be one. Actually, the determinant of deformation matrix indicates the change of the volume. So when Q is one, the inverse of invariant plane strain is the same with its original value except the sign. Here, the plus n, here, the minus n, right? So, it is natural when you deform When you deform this, like this simple shear, and apply its inverse, then it return to its original form. Right? So when you think about the simple shear, you can understand the inverse of this invariant plane strain, original invariant plane strain, is also invariant plane strain. You can check that property by you can check this is the inverse of the original invariant plane strain by deform this arbitrarily vector at first this one and then deform it again its inverse form then it should be returned to its original so you can check whether this is a real inverse of this invariant plane strain by deform this vector at first this one and then deform it again with this form So the original invariant plane strain is at its inverse form is given by command P and X P. So at first, we deform the vector u with this one, and it will give This is in the product of vector P 
and back to u and let's put this one as color value a and this will be This is the form of the matrix of arbitrary vector u with invariant plane strain, xpx. And once we deform again this vector with this matrix, if this matrix is the real inverse of its original form, then it will return the vector to its original, xu, right? It will, it will. And again, this is A. And when you look at this, this term, it is determinant P minus one. It comes from the property of the determinant P here you can see the determinant P is one minus M P, X, and X, D, and then you compare this one to this one. This is the determinant P minus one. So when we arrange the form, Any problem? Which? Okay. 
Okay. Here, M, this M comes from this one, and this matrix also has value M. So there is Y, here is M, and here is again M. But this term is equivalent to the determinant P minus 1, so this M value is included in determinant P minus 1. So here is the large parenthesis. So M is go out. Okay? Everyone is clear? So from this one, you can understand this minus one and this term will be canceled out. And this term is the same with this one, right? So the deformation will return to its original vector. So now you can understand that this is really the inverse of the deformation. In plane strain deformation of the original matrix, okay? So with, oh, it is too hot today, really. So finally, I'd like to mention about the important character of the plane invariant line strain, which comes from the property of the invariant plane strain. Let's consider these two sequential deformation of two invariant plane strain. Here, the first one is the deform, uh, the, the displacement vector D here and plane normal P, and the second one is displacement vector E here and plane normal Q. For the simplicity, let's consume that the D is on the plane P. But it is not necessarily to be there. Anyway, let's consider two successive, two sequential deformation invariant plane strain by invariant plane strain. Then intuitively you can understand the vector u on two invariant plane will not be changed by two successive invariant plane strain. Right? <coughs> you can check that fact by considering the deformation of these two invariant plane strain. Here is plane strain P and Q, and this is the combination the deformation matrix express the combination of two sequential invariant plane strain. So when you calculate, and this term, two, three, four term, and this is the inner product of P and E, and this is a scalar value. So here is the MN and the product of this color value. 
So when we apply this deformation on the vector u, which is on the plane P and Q, then just apply here and x u. Because u is on plane P, uh, plane P, and also Q, Q, all of one, one, two, three. This term is all go to zero. So the deformation of two <coughs> successive plane strain remains this vector undeformed. And you can find that undeformed vector by intersection of two invariant plane, right? Then how the plane normal? How about the plane normal? As I told you, if you want to find out how the plane normal deformed by deformation matrix, you have to know the inverse. So this is the inverse of two successive plane strain like this. And you can find the final form of deformation, inverse of deformation matrix like here. So let's assume, <coughs> let's think about the vector, plane normal vector H, which indicate the plane contained the vector D and E, two displacement vector. The plane contained two displacement vector, and H is the plane normal of that plane. Then you can find out this plane normal vector will not be changed by two successive plane strain. So you can understand two successive plane strain means invariant line strain, right? Two successive plane strain is invariant line strain. So the property of invariant line strain is that it leaves a vector u, it has a vector u which is not affected by the deformation. And also it has one plane normal, h, which is also not affected by the deformation invariant line deformation. So if we have invariant line deformation and we can factorize, we can divide invariant line strain into two successive invariant plane strain, then the invariant line is an intersection of two invariant plane strain and invariant normal is a plane normal which contain two displacement vector. That is very important property of invariant line strain. And we apply this one in next class to understand to formulate, to manipulate the theory of Martin safety transformation, crystallography theory of Martin safety transformation. Okay? As I announced, we do not have class on this Thursday because I have a business trip and see you in next Tuesday. Okay? Any question?
No? Okay. See you on next Tuesday.